You start with yeast in warm water, about 110 degrees. Let it sit in there. I go ahead and add my sugar and let it start to foam up. And then I add it to my flour and salt mixture. Turn it on. This takes about 15 minutes. You can see the dough really starting to get smooth. I went from the mixing paddle to the dough hook. This will make eight personal type pan pizzas. Here we go. Look how much this dough has risen. It's gotten probably four times. Take that off and here's what I did. First thing I do is the smack down. Look at that, smashes right down. Like that. And I'll take this, put it back into a ball like that. Then what I do is I shape it into a ball and I'll divide this into four. And the way I do this is I just cut it into four. I cut it in half. You don't have to be perfect because we want our, our doughs to look artisan. <laughs> that gives you excuse to mess them up. There you go. One, two, three, four. All right. Now, get it in close here. And then I just start stretching the dough. And I stretch the dough out. Bless you, Rudy. I stretch the dough out, and I don't want it to be perfectly round. I kind of like it to have a little bit of a little bit of shape to it. Once again, we're going for that artisan look. And you want to get those little bubbles popping up on the crust. You can see them there. There's one there. All right. And then I just keep working this dough out, making it bigger and bigger as I go around. And put a little crust on her. And then that one's ready. I like to use parchment paper. Makes it easier to get in and out of the oven. Whoop. All right. So here's what we do. So then you take the sauce, and you don't want to put too much sauce on it. And you definitely don't want center overload. Center overload means there's too much sauce in the center and toppings in the center, and it makes for a soggy, saggy pizza. And we don't want saggy pizza. So I do like that in the center. And this one's gonna be my favorite. My favorite is pepperoni. So I go like that. Good cheese, don't be stingy on the cheese. And then don't be stingy on your pepperoni. Now, stop. Get your pepperoni sliced fresh at the deli. It tastes better than that pepperoni you buy pre-sliced in a bag that might have been sliced, I don't know, four weeks ago or something like that. Oxygen's already gotten to it and it's not as potent as this pepperoni. And this pepperoni, awesome. And then I finish it with a little cheese on top, tile the greetings together. And then I finish it, finish it with a little man. There we go. What I do is I take this parchment paper out and just slide it. Now this one's actually done. Look at that pizza, y'all. Isn't that freaking beautiful? Look how big that crust is. It's giant. That's what you want. Mm -hmm. You want the brown on the crust there, a little color on the pepperonis. And then where it's scarred like that. See that? And that's what those stones do. It's crazy, look at this pizza. Look how thick the crust is on that. Good color underneath, nice and charred. And I just take some butter, garlic butter, and go along the edges like that. That's a ridiculous looking pizza.